Today we are doing something that has been highly requested ever since last August. Today we're going back after river monsters, also known as sturgeon. I've been out doing some sturgeon fishing trips, but this year, no lie, I have been getting whooped. That's why you guys have seen zero sturgeon fishing videos from me. Nick and I were out here, same exact spot two months ago, but the water was raging and the water was really high. I hooked one and I will just let this video speak for itself. Uh-oh, here we go, Nick. So today we're back out here for a vengeance and we're gonna get rigged up. We're gonna camp overnight. Today, I think we've got pretty good odds. The water just looks perfect. Water's a little bit calm, but there's still some current. And when you fish for sturgeon, current is always a good thing. So we're gonna get rigged up here, get our rods in the water, and we'll settle down camp and show you around. All rigged up, same old stuff. If you're familiar with my sturgeon videos, we got a 12 foot ugly stick here. This is my dad's rod from like 30 years ago. Got a Daiwa Sea line 50X, discontinued. Also my dad's reel from 30 years ago. I have 50 pound mono as my main line. And then I just have a slider rig. This is what I've been using for the past several years and it's done well for me. So I have a slider on my main line. And on this slider right here, I have 20 pound mono tied to an eight ounce teardrop weight. And the little trick that I do with my weight is instead of tying my 20 pound mono straight to the lead weight, I attach a piece of Dacron from my lead weight to my 20 pound mono. That way when this weight is bouncing on the rocks, even if this part right here jams into a knot or jams into a rock, it's not gonna break because with Dacron or braid, when this jams into a rock, the line just kind of squishes versus if you had a mono knot tied onto your lead weight, if that knot, that mono knot jams into a rock, it has a higher likelihood of just breaking. That's why I have this little Dacron here attaching my weight to my 20 pound mono. It's a little tip I've learned from a cousin and it's saved me a lot of weights. So after my slider, I have a plastic bead followed by a rubber bead, which this rubber bead is stuck in the knot. And then I have my main line tied to a swivel using a uni knot. And then on the other eye of the swivel, I have a hundred pound Dacron tied to a size eight barbless octopus hook. And then today I have a small piece of crappie. I only caught one crappie for bait. So I'm trying to use as little or as minimal of the crappie as possible so I can have a lot more bait than just one bait. We have a lot of bluegill as bait too, but I have more luck with crappie than bluegill. That's why Nick over there is challenging me. He's saying that he's only gonna use bluegill on this trip. So we'll see, crappie versus bluegill. Far enough. I was a little nervous. Got lucky with that cast. Decent cast, there's not a lot of current, so I don't think my weight should be drifting too far. One of the biggest battles as bank fishermen for sturgeon is always the current trying to get your weight to stick. With the boat, it's easy. You can just boat up to where you want to be, put on like a 16 ounce weight on it and drop it down and the current's not strong enough. But with bank fishing, if you put a 16 ounce weight on, you're not gonna cast it as far as something like an eight ounce weight or a 10 ounce weight. So there's a happy medium that you gotta find as a bank fisherman versus like fishing on the boat. It's one of the biggest disadvantages you have as a bank fisherman is just trying to get your wait far enough to the spot where the sturgeon are. This is the type of conditions where if your rod moves, it's 100% of fish. It's me, Nick, and Elliot, so there's three of us. We all carpooled in my truck, so we have just all sorts of stuff in the bed of my truck. We haven't really done anything with camp yet, so we still have a lot of stuff to unload. Um, but yeah, that's the rig. But alongside the rig, there's a lot of these blackberry blackberries literally that's the name of them and they're ripe so if we get hungry we can pick some blackberries and eat them the thing with this blackberry bush is it's full of spider webs <laughs> and so you got to really pick your way through blackberry oh 
Mine's sour. So good. Yeah, that's how they are. They're sour. Oh. <laughs> so good. It's delicious. It's like, it, oh, you're right. It's extra sour. <sighs> but yeah, we got little blackberries as snacks. That wasn't you, right? Nope, it wasn't me. I barely, I was. That was a fish. No way, that could have been me. That, that was a fish. I was barely touching my reel. I heard the bell, but I thought it was you. But I looked, I looked and then I looked up and my rod was going down. That's a sturgeon for sure. Why didn't he take it? I don't know. Cause I, I guarantee if it was a catfish, I'd have him. Cause catfish are a lot more, uh, they're relentless, dude. They come up, they take it, they just take it. One thing I do now is I organize everything in totes and by color. So red tote for me is cooking stuff cast iron pan, it's got, you know, emergency food, some extra Gatorade in there, propane, stove, plume foil, forks, spoons, knives, plates, napkins, seasoning, emergency jet boil. And then over here, this is kind of like my tote that goes in my house and I throw everything I need for that specific trip into it. This tote over here, the cooking tote, is universal. It doesn't matter if what I'm hunting or what I'm fishing. It's always set. This thing, it varies depending on what I'm doing. So camping lantern. This I just, just bought at the store. So these actually belong in there. Got some dish soap. And then over here, for example, I don't always bring a spotting scope, but I figured it might be fun on this trip. So we'll be organizing some stuff first aid kit again some of these stuff is supposed to be over here first aid kit knives got my zolio water filter net rigs lights thermocell so simple stuff like that but organizing stuff in tote has certainly made my life a lot easier versus having to bring every single little thing individually we got my arctic cooler we got two bags of ice in here and whatever needs to be on ice, we have in here. So we got macaroni salad, jalapenos, some cabbage and whatnot for cooking. But we're hungry, so I bought some chicken thighs, or actually chicken breasts, that have been all cut up. We're gonna make some tacos, chicken tacos. It's been a while since I've done chicken tacos, so that's what we're gonna eat up. Dinner's always the best. This is more like a wrap, more than it is a taco. You're not talking about the one on the bank? grass. Mm -hmm. Fish on, baby. When you eat, they eat. Yep, that's a fish on. Ah. 
That was a light bite. I didn't even hear the bell go off. He's not big. Still chewing food. Six footer. I knew he was gonna jump. I felt him coming up. <laughs> Let's go. Finally. Fight him, Elliot? No? All right. We're still eating. Look at Nick, he didn't even care about me. <laughs> He's like, I'd rather enjoy my taco. I know you got this. No, I got this. No worries. Woo! Water just looked way too good today to not get bit. Granted, I got a bite earlier, but this guy finally committed. No, as soon as you said it, I saw it because I never heard the bell. I didn't hear the bell, I saw it though. He's not big. He's not fighting a lot. Come on, Nick. I want that double up. I'm looking for that double. It's 1 0 for the crappie. 1 <laughs> 0. I'm gonna play a little bit more gentle with this fish. I'm already 0-2 this year for sturgeon. Got a brand new spool of 50 pound mono, so I'm not too concerned. He's not too big. Just want to get you excited. My drag isn't even like super tight either, and he's not doing too much damage to it. So when it comes to sturgeon fishing, especially when it's big fish like this, it's all about taking turns. So right now the sturgeon is on what I call attack, meaning he's peeling line and I'm just bracing him. Once he does, or once he finishes his attack or his run, I'm gonna turn this fish around and then I'll be on the offense and pull him in and he's just gonna be basically coming in as I pull him in. But right now it's a fresh fish, he's got full energy. And so we kind of have to tire him out first. And so he's running out. All right, so now he's done running, so I'm gonna turn him around and I'm gonna start my attack and get line in. Where at? You wanna fight him, Elliot? You're fine? I couldn't. Hey, Nick. You wanna come swap me real quick? I'm gonna, I have to swap the battery out for that GoPro. Here, just fight him. I'm gonna swap my batteries out. <laughs> I'm already starting to feel my lower back. I've hardly done anything. Yeah, that's a Changi's rod. One piece, right? Oh, no, two, piece. two piece. It's a, the discontinued. Oh, Are you? All right. Are you? All right, let me swap my GoPro real quick. All right. All right, I can take over. Unless you want to fight him. There. Get your double. Get your double. I thought I saw something moving too. I heard the bell and then he stopped. He might have been biting for a while. I hope so. Yeah. Oh, yep, that's a fish. Let's go, let's get our double, Nick. No, <laughs> let's go. We were just talking about we wanted our first double. Oh my, oh. God. Oh my God. Watch him, he's gonna breach. Elliot, you're gonna have to land fish for us. <laughs> this is why we have you today. A double was gonna happen. If it was just me and Nick, we would be in trouble. Oh, my fish is running. He's, he's in the current. He's just like directly in front of us. I just don't want to, dude, your fish is close. He's right here. Yeah, I know. Is he big? Oh, he's probably trying to get into the current. Oh, he's gonna jump. Watch, he's gonna jump. 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 Oh, he didn't jump. He just ran out. 
Yeah, on the side like that. Yeah, there you go. All right, it's my turn. Your bluegill worked. <laughs> we are. You're under me. Am I? Yep, you're under me. Here. Uh, yeah, go under me. You're under me. Yep. yep. Oh, there we go. Now we're good. I don't want, I'm gonna. Ooh. Your drag's a little loose. No, I just don't wanna. You're running 40 or 50 pounds? 40, 50. 50? I just, New line? Last time I was, I relied a lot with you. Yeah, dude, we're good. Last time. Our fish are our fish are super high up, so we're, we don't have to worry about rubbing yet. I've yet to feel a single rock rub. Dude, I'm like sweating. It's humid. All right, I'm gonna try to land mine as soon as I can, so I can help you out. So if you guys are wondering why I'm finding the fish so weird, it's because I'm using the butt of the rod as leverage. So I'm just using my foot to stop the, the rod from going backwards and I'm just going down and then I'm just using my whole body to reel in line or pull in line. Yeah, he's high up. Your fish is high up. Mine, mine's high up too. Yeah, yours is coming in nice. I'm glad we ate. I would have been toast. Yeah, that is your fish. So Elliot, once it gets close, you're gonna have to hold the rod. Nick will have to go land them. My shoes, I'm just gonna step in the water with my shoes. I don't wanna do that. Yeah. Am I over? Am I over you, Nick? I can't tell. I'm over. I'm over you. you go yeah, you go under. Go under. Go low. My my fish is going again. Yeah, my, mine's a good size. Whoa. <laughs> oh, you you got a little guy. You're good. You, you can give it to Elliot. Elliot can handle that guy. Yeah, he's small. That's a keeper size. Yeah. Keep tension on him. Keep tension on him. Yeah, that's a keeper size. That guy's small. We got one. Nick's gonna go change his shoes to sandals so he can step in the water. Mine's big though. Mine's going another round. Back then, this stretch of the river used to have a, a retention season. It was actually year round, I believe. And it was 43 to 54 inches measuring fork length, meaning it's from the snout of the sturgeon to that little fork of its tail. That's what we call keeper size. That would have been a keeper, but now it's just catch and release here. Go grab the tail. Get, get, get the tail, Nick. Once you have the tail, that, that fish is immobilized. We landed one. <laughs> All right, what are, you, what are you gonna do? Photo. You need to get deeper. You need to get behind the fish. Yeah. Let it go. Yep, just let it go. My fish is already way back out. <sighs> okay, just make sure you keep tension on it. Yep, go down as you reel. Hold closer down here. There you go. I'm gonna help Nick land this guy. All right. There we go. I got him. First fish. Second bite, but first, first fish. Nick's alarm is going off. This is Nick, Nick's fish. It's probably like a five footer. Elliot is holding my rod. He's fighting my fish. I had to come help Nick land his fish. You don't want to 
pull the fish too far out. These fish's bodies are not designed to be on land. And so if you pull them out, there's no buoyancy helping their internal organs. So you'll crush them in air. So like this, his gills are fully in the water. His spine is just showing out. The thing with sturgeon is these things right here, these things are called scoots and they're sharp. So if you get tail swipe, that's a good way to cut yourself. Beautiful sturgeon. How you doing, Elliot? Good? All right. We're gonna unhook them. Yeah. We, got a, we got a second fish to go. What happened? What happened? He's going again? It's all good. It's all good. We'll be right there, Elliot. Marvelous hook pops right out. Let's turn him around. Watch his, watch his fin. Watch his fin. Okay. Don't cut me, please, baby. Turn him this way. Yep, there he goes. There he goes. Bye. All right. I'm back, Elliot. Appreciate the help. I'm back. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. It's a, it's a big fish. <laughs> yeah. Watch your hand. Oh, you, you got a lot of line bag. Nice. I'm back. We did it, Nick. We got a double. We did got a double, dude. Oh. This guy's out of energy, but so am I. I'm out of energy too, dude. I feel like I'm at puke. Because we just, we just ate. I feel like I'm at puke. We literally just ate. Oh I don't blame you. This guy's close. Guys, I can't believe we got a double. We were literally just talking about it a couple hours ago. Like, we need to get a double in because like, we've never had a double before. And... Oh, I thought I lost him. Well, huh? I thought I lost him for a we second. Got a double. The bug definitely got the. Oh no. I feel rubbing. I feel rubbing. Uh, no. Dang it, I didn't want. There's a ledge right here. I didn't think she was going to go there. I don't think so. I, I'm letting her go. My line should be okay, but when they're close like this, there's a lot of pressure. Sketchy. I hope she freed herself. Woo! Dude, I, my back is drenched. <laughs> my back is drenched. I think she's good. I think she's good. Yes. Yes. Come home. This is random freaking two by four right there. Yeah, that's that's what we call the ledge. That's our marker, because right there, if you go like this five yards to the right or left, there's a ledge. Oh, you just drop right down? Yeah. That's why a lot of times I hate fighting fish right here because they rub and they, we break a lot of fish right here. That's why if they fight over here, it's fine. But if they come right here, it's, you never know. That's why. Wait, so is that yours? Huh? Is that your bone people's? No, that's, oh. it just, it's always been there. Yeah. She's still pretty high right now. She's, yeah, she's on the surface. Come on, don't go that way. Go that way. Oh, oh Nick, here, here. I'll, I'll land her. I'll land her. That's a beast. That's a beast. Oh, that's a beast. Go, go this way. Pull her in a little bit. Oh, that thing's a beast. Pull her this way. She's on a rock. Come on, we gotta go. Come on, just, just this little rock. Just this little rock. Oh my goodness. Look at the size of that head. It's oh my goodness. Beast. Dude, look at my hand to the head. It's a beast. Look at that, dude. It's a beast. I got small hands though, but what the heck? So this is what we come down here for. These are river monsters. And once again, these fish, they're really big. So you don't want to pull them out of the water. You want to always keep them at least halfway submerged. This guy's a little beast. So he, I have to pull him a little farther so I can hold them properly. This is a really dark fish and that's just a beautiful fish. Again, there's scoots all along her side and her spine. It's just a beautiful fish. Let's let her go. Yeah. So these right here are called barbos. This is what they use to find uh, food. These things are their uh, sense receptors for food. We gotta come underneath the mouth and I gotta find my hook. 
which where is my hook? Probably. She was not coming off. All right, barbless hook pops right off. Okay, you ready, Nick? I'm gonna turn her head. Yeah. Okay, one thing you guys wanna do is when you guys release her, always look at your two fins to make sure her fin isn't tucked under where it's gonna break. So her fin is good right there. Her fin is good there. So we're gonna turn her head to go so she can swim. So when, what you do is you lift her head off the bottom and then you turn her. So we're gonna lift, slowly watch her fin. Her fin moved out of the Yep. All right. Then turn her head deep and let her go. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Oh. Woo! Let's go, bro. Good work, Dilly. Go. Woo! That was what sturgeon fishing is all about. That was too cool, man. I'm not even gonna cast out. Nick can cast out. I need to finish eating. I was so jealous when uh, I hooked a fish and I looked around and Nick and Elliot were just smiling, eating their food. <laughs> I was like, are you serious? Y'all not even gonna come help me? really roughing it here so it cleared out the bed of my truck all of our totes are outside and I have this little foam right here where I laid out on the bed of my truck and Elliot's actually just gonna sleep on the bed of my truck stargaze and then I'm gonna sleep out here on my cot no cover just sleeping in the open didn't bring a pillow so I have one of my tents as a pillow got my sleeping bag as simple as it gets. We have our shade tent here, but we don't need to use it because we have a lot of sun here or shade here. And then Nick's over here doing his own little thing. This is his one person shelter. He managed to get the stakes in, setting up his camp. It is so comfy. It's really comfy actually. Yeah, I might need to go hammer this down first. Nick, Nick, Nick. Dude, why is your... Dude, did you lose your weight? Dude, I think you lost your weight. Like literally there's like nothing on it. Here. That's a fish. Fish on. 
It's that morning bite. Morning bite, baby. What? You still have your whole thing? Yeah, I don't know. It felt like nothing happened. Oh, yeah. What a weird turn of events. Yeah, dude. Not good though. This guy's not big. It's a fish though. It's going. It's making his I, first I think for now. He can't even run. <laughs> He's trying to. He's trying to. A plus for effort. A plus for effort. Yeah, he's coming in. It's not big. Man, when I was reeling yours in, I literally thought your weight was gone. He's right here. This guy's probably in the 40s. Casted my first cast this morning with another piece of crappie. Sat here for like 30 minutes. Something weird was going on with Nick's rod. And as we were messing with his, looked at mine and uh, fish on. This guy's not big, he can't even run. But even though he can't run, it don't mean he's just gonna come in easy either. rubbing but my line should be all right I think I just broke off my weight right there come on buddy get you in quick oh my goodness what in the world I've never had a sturgeon do that before I could force him, but I just, I'm always scared when they're close like this. Like I'm not even thumbing it, it's just a drag that he can't pull. Come on, buddy. Come in and we'll get you going. Ready, Nick? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll let him. I'll, I'll let him. He's here. Yeah, like a four and a half footer. I'll grab this camera. Go a little workout. Start the morning. Yeah, this is an oversize for sure, not a keeper. All right. Yeah, probably about the same size. Probably about a. It's a different one. Come on, buddy. All right, that's my first catch for the day. Just a, maybe 60 incher, five footer, nothing crazy. Again, came off of another piece of crappie. This guy's, typically the younger they are, the sharper the scoots. So even when you hold their by their tail, always be careful. So just another beautiful Snake River sturgeon. That's uh. Uh, two, two, one on the crappie and bluegill. Two, one on the crappie. I'm in the lead. Good old piece of crappie. We're not gonna do too much talking because oftentimes the morning is the prime time to be catching fish. So we got this guy in and going to get this guy on his way and get my lure back out. This guy was not coming off. Sturgeon's mouths are often like equivalent to like cloth. That's why you use barbless hooks. If you don't, that barb will just tear their mouth up. So this is him right here. Again, he's, he's full of energy because I didn't really let him fight. So he's trying to turn his head to deeper water. So 
still gonna turn them and just let them go. All right. Just let them go. Full of energy. Always wanna release them. The sooner you can land a fish, the better, because they don't use a lot of energy. So, what, so when you use these reels where there's no line guide, when you fight sturgeon, or at least when I fight sturgeon, I don't guide my line, I just reel it in. And because I'm not guiding the line to spool evenly onto the spool, after I land a sturgeon, I just do like a random cast to let all that uneven line out, and then I'll reel it back in even evenly, and then I will do my actual cast so that it can go farther without having a bird's nest. I like these guideless reels for casting because you can cast a little bit farther. You don't have the friction of that little line guide. So I'm just gonna quickly yank this one out. Not too far. You get to the part where your spool is even. And then here you can start guiding it by hand to even out. With this crappie, all I've been doing is I've just been cutting it into vertical strips like this. Just like this. I am surprised. It's almost August and this one still has eggs, but I like it vertical, longer like this, so that I can just have it up along the shank of the hook. That way the tip of the hook is exposed. You never want to have your piece of bait like this because it's blocking the tip of your hook and you can't set the hook into the fish's mouth. So always have the bait on the shank of the hook like this so that your hook is exposed or the tip of your hook is exposed. of the hook like that and I'm just gonna take some 20 pound mono and I'm gonna tie the middle piece right here and then I'm gonna secure it to the eye of the hook that way my piece of crappie just doesn't slide off because again we are using barbless hooks and so there's no barb to catch the meat or your bait from falling off the hook so that's one thing that I'm gonna do and then we're ready to cast I like this cast. Are you four? <clears throat> Number three. Oh, <laughs> I think it's a big one. <sighs> yeah, it's a big one. This is the mama we're after. It's a beast. It's a beast. I have my drag tight too. Oh, what a beast. Coming in nicely. You missed it, Elliot. We already caught one earlier. We caught, yeah, we did, yeah. We caught one at first light. Yeah, 
All right, back to mono. Back to mono? Yeah, Damn. back to mono. She's coming in nice. Man, I like Changi's rod. When you go up, like the rod just feels like, like it's got enough power, but it's also got enough give to the point where you don't feel like you're just breaking. I can't see with this light. She done? I think she might be done. That's a beast. 70. It's a beast. Oh. Huh, not as big as I thought. It's a beast though. Here we go. Get the tail. You gotta go deep if you there you go. Woo! Okay. Ali, you wanna hold this rod? Just hold it. We got her. Oh, watch it. Here, hold this. Hold this. I got it. She's going again. Hope she break off right She's there. not gonna break off. I hope not. Butterfingers. Yeah, you gotta get behind her. I was trying to. She's coming back. All right. She's right there. All right. There we go. Second time's a charm. Just a good fish. Got him on the crappie right there. I'm gonna unhook her just because we don't need it. And look at that. That Dacron's still saving my weight. I've yet to lose a single weight except for the first cast. That's a beast right there. Again, always keep them at least halfway submerged. This side of the gill is completely submerged. Just another beast. Again, marvels. That's how they found. That's how they find food. That's how this one found my crappie. Oh, take a picture of Got a nice snout. I'll go stand on that side. She kind of scruffed up her tail. But that's a beautiful fish. This is probably a, I don't know, six footer? Yeah. Six, seven footer? Six and a half. Just a here. bunch of girth. That's the texture of these fish, just beautiful. Again, scoots right here and the, along the side. Just a beautiful fish, fins on a rock. Ready to go? Man, I'm ready to go. All right, let, let me turn her head and uh, we'll be good to go. So again, very simple process. Watch the fins, lift her head up off the bottom, turn her head inward. And then from here, you can see and just let her go. She just... Get it. Yeah, go, there you go. Bye-bye. <laughs> Just a dinosaur and she's gone like that. Dude, let's go. Woo! She fought really good at the beginning. She did, dude. She, she gave one really nice good. run. I thought she was a lot bigger than that, but... That was a good run that she took. Yeah, just one big run. Ha had my drag pretty tight. Fish number four Fish number on the three. trip. No, four? Oh, that four. Yeah, okay. I've, I've got three. Nick's got one. That's awesome to see that my crappie is still on the hook. I can basically just cast this right back out. Again, I'm just gonna check my leader line for my weight and it's not even afraid at all. So I can cast it right back out. And when I was reeling her in, I didn't do too bad of a job evenly spooling. So I can really just cast it out. I called it good for sturgeon fishing. So he drove up a little bit off the road and we're at this little slough boat launch and i took elliot up here because he's not sturgeon fishing and he looked kind of bored so we're we're over here to fish we just caught a fish it's just a little slough we're gonna be over here just pan fishing or bass fishing whatever is willing to bite it's on this little dock nice what'd you catch that guy on uh, a grub come out and crush it 
Is that your first catch? No, I caught three. I caught one this Already caught three already? Yeah, I caught one that's bigger than this hold, one. Hold that guy up. Nice little small mouth. Okay. I caught one that's bigger than this one. And this you one. caught him off the, that thing? Yeah. That grub is huge. They are deep. Yeah, they're very deep. Makes sense. It's hot. Nice. Woo. First bass of the trip. Right into the deep. What is that? Bass? My dad caught a five pound pike minnow once. Yeah, the pike minnow here are big. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. He just spit out a crawdad. You see that? He did? Yeah, look at the crawdad. He just spit out a crawdad. I'm ahead of that. Ooh. This is a good one. Shaky head. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, oh, chaser. Oh, bluegill. There's like three bluegills right here. Oh, crappie. Oh, what? I caught a crappie. <laughs> this guy would have been perfect sturgeon bait. I've never seen a crappie. I could still bring him back, but this guy's perfect sturgeon bait. So when we go after crappie for sturgeon bait the smaller the crappie the better because they fit on your hook better this guy is about the biggest you want but we're not gonna keep this guy because nick's all about bluegill this trip and i'm done sturgeon fishing so nice crappie good to know that there's crappie right here yep <sighs> that was a fun little mid-morning excursion so many little bass saw some nice pike minnow in there but we only came out here for like an hour we're gonna go back we're gonna go pick up nick maybe nick is in the middle of fighting a sturgeon who knows we're gonna go check on him pack up and hit another park real quick then that's pretty much gonna do it for my last fishing trip for 2023 summer which is crazy to say why is it the last fishing trip because from here on out most of my plans are hunting. Tuesday is August 1st and that's when fall season kicks off. <laughs>